Hi, I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effect. And in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on expressions in Silhouette. I'm going to take you through some of the basics and then we can start to uh, build on those ideas and see how we can get something a little bit more fun and complicated. Let's get started on how we begin to use expressions then. And I'm going to start with a color correction node uh, because it has a lot of controls that we can start to work together. Now, the simplest way that we can start to link parameters together is just by clicking and dragging between the two we want to link. So maybe I'll, I'll start with uh, contrast and then bring this up to saturation. And you can see that I now have an expression put into this line next to it that just says contrast. So this tells me that the saturation is going to be the same value of the contrast in the same node. So if I now bring up contrast, you can see that saturation follows suit. But we can also come in and do some simple math operators. So for example, if we wanted this to be contrast, I don't know, minus 10, we can come in, we can set that in there, and our saturation is now going to be the contrast minus 10. We can also do things like division. So we can take this two divided by two. Or we can even go negative. So if I wanted to invert this so that we have a negative saturation when the contrast goes up, I can just do that multiplied by minus, uh, let's say minus 0.5, minus 0.5. So now as the contrast goes up, the saturation comes down. And if I wanted to turn off the expression, I could just click on the expression button there and it disappears again. We turn it back on. It remembers what we had it set to last time. But we don't have to link values from the same node. Uh, if I add in a, a blur after this, for example, let's add in the blur. I can now link my blur value to anything else in the color correct. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first thing I'm going to do is just bring my node window over to the side here. That's just so drop down menus don't get cut off when I click on them. Because if I click on the three dots over on the right hand side, I can copy my expression reference. So if I do that, and we come into a different node, for example, into color correction, I can now turn on the expression in here, and I can just paste using control or command V into my contrast. And now it's saying it's taking it from the node called blur one, and it's taking it from the value called blur. So now if I control my blur here, as I bring that up, the contrast also goes up as well. So that's a way how we can use expressions to quickly link two values together. But of course, we can start to go deeper than that and chain multiple things as well. So in this example, I've got a, um, a little camera shake happening. Uh, we can, if we play this back, you can see it's just a very slight wobble, which is all well and good. Um, but maybe I want to have, you know, a little bit of a bigger sort of uh, bigger sort of movement or something that looks even more random. So what I'll do is I'll, well, let's first rename this one to camera shake one, and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to go command or control D and just duplicate that in there. So the other way of linking different nodes together uh, actually plays on the ability to be able to lock different node views here. So if I come down to my node and I click the lock button, this is going to lock this viewer to camera shake one. And I can add another viewer, which is by default tabbed down at the bottom, but I can drag it over to any other place in the UI. And this will now be, because it's not locked, this is gonna be uh, whatever my active node is. So if I come into camera shake two now, we can see camera shake one and camera shake two simultaneously. And I can come over here and I can just drag from one 
value into the other one. And just like before, it writes the name of the node and the parameter that we are going with. And I'll do that both for amplitude and translation. So if I make a change here, so let's do uh, camera shake times two. So multiply by two and translation. I'll do this one. Well, let's let's just halve this. So I'll do divided by two. Uh, what you'll notice as well, if I type in something that isn't a valid expression, I'm going to get a little warning mark just here. And if I hover over it, I will get a tooltip that tells me what the problem is. And that goes away as soon as I create a valid expression. So if we play this back now, we can now get a slightly more complex looking camera shake. Let's play that through because we've got two shakes happening simultaneously. Let's chain this one more time so I can uh, just duplicate that up one more time and come in here. And you'll see that even though I've duplicated the node, it still also remembers the expression that was on there. So all I have to do here to make this even uh, even bigger is maybe I'll do this one camera scale or what's it called? Uh, the amplitude. I'll scale that by four, but I want very small movements here. So maybe I'll divide this one by eight. And let's play this through. And so we're getting a nice little shock going on there. Excellent. Now, what this means is that I only have to keyframe up one value to now affect all three of these. So if I take my keyframes here or my amplitude and my translation, I'll put those both to zero. I'll come over a few frames. I'll take both of these up quite high. Maybe not quite that high, but maybe quite high. And then I'll take this down again back to zero and zero. And if I play this back, I'm going to get a nice big bump. Let's play this back one more time. Bump. And maybe I want this to be to last a little bit longer. So let's come over here so I can see my keyframes and I can just take these keyframes and stretch them out. So even though I'm only working on one set of keyframes, I'm actually changing up multiple nodes simultaneously. Now, maybe camera shakes not your thing, but we can use expressions with basic Python math to come in and create some slightly more complex results just with some very basic functions. And let's take a look at how that's going to work. So I've got a, a prism here and let's open this up. And I've got some keyframes already on here. So let's play this through. And it's just sort of pulsating back and forth because the only thing I'm animating is the scale start. So we're getting some waviness happening, but it's very, you know, it's very mechanical sort of waviness. So here's how we use expressions to look at values on different properties at different points of time. So let's uh, let's come a little look. Let's come and have a little look here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scale start to my scale end. So now these are the same. So it's a transform underscore scale start. And so now it's just bouncing back and forward, but there's no there's no sort of variety. There's no, um, you know, frame separation or anything like that. So it's literally just bouncing back and forward now. Now, when we want to reference these values at a different point of time, we can't use this simplified expression markup. We have to look at the, the sort of scripting language that Silhouette usually uses. Now, when it comes to some of these examples, I would absolutely recommend checking out the user guide. It does have some good examples of where we want to, uh, to work with this. And one of these is how we link a parameter at a different frame. So the syntax is going to be a little bit different. 
because we're going to be referencing these values as the uh, the scripting does. So instead of just looking at transform underscore scale start, we have to actually tell it explicitly uh, what node it is it's going to be looking at. So we need it to look at itself. So we'll say self, and we want it to look at a property. So we'll go self dot property. Then we need to encapsulate all of this within parentheses. So open up parentheses, and we'll do a uh, an apostrophe to start, an apostrophe to end, and then close up the parentheses. And then I just need to say, tell it to get value. So get, and then big V, and get value. And I can go get value frame. So that means that we're going to be looking at the value of the current frame. So now if I want it to look a few frames before, I can just go get value, open brackets, frame minus five. And then hit enter. And that will now look for the value at scale start five frames before. And we can change this up to maybe minus two to just look a couple of frames before or minus 25 to look at yeah, basically a whole second before we're working at 25 frames a second. And this starts to create a slightly more interesting effect. And of course, if we want to change the timings on this, we only have to change the timings on one property now. So change the keyframes on one property and everything else will update automatically because it's being driven by expressions. And it's with that in mind that we come to our final example. Because what we've done as well is in this release, we've got a mixture of an action with expression. So there's a new action that has been created. So if we take a look at this setup, I've got quite a few roto nodes. And I've got quite a, a lot of uh, quite a lot of layers in my roto nodes. Now, one of the things that I, I want to do with this is I want to be able to control motion blur and link motion blur uh, across these different nodes so that when I enable motion blur on one node, it enables on everything. Because, uh, you know, when we've got a certain number of, of layers together, actually, you know, previewing motion blur can get a, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit intensive especially if we've got it across multiple nodes. And it can be quite easy to forget to turn on one of these nodes at the end of a composition. So if I take a look at my actions up at the top here, I've got a new action in my create uh, category called motion blur controller. And what this does is it uses uh, expressions to now connect let's uh, let's uh, make sure that we're always seeing our motion blur controller and we'll come over to one of the uh, rotos here let's push this one here so if we look at the roto node now we can see that this action not only created a new node which is called motion blur one a little controller node it also linked my motion blur, not just on a single roto node, but on every one of my roto nodes. So all of these are now linked up to this main controller. So if I turn on this controller here, hit enable, it's gonna turn on motion blur on all of the nodes. And if I change my shutter angle, so let's take that up to let's take it up to 360. So it's going to be very visible. It's going to change that shutter angle across all of my roto nodes as well. Same with the shutter phase. So that's kind of fun. In fact, even more fun. Uh, if you wanted to, we can now even link up the shutter phase angle. Uh, sorry, the shutter phase and the shutter phase angle so that the shutter phase is always minus 
half of uh, of what the shutter angle is so it always keeps the motion blur in the uh, in the middle so we can you know we can get really kind of uh fun and creative with our um expressions and start to start to build those into something bigger now with expressions linking different nodes together you might want to be able to find a way of seeing what is connected to what and this is really really straightforward all you do is go to the top of the trees and there is a new button up here which looks like an equal sign we just click on that and you can now see these little golden threads that move to show which of these nodes are connected via expressions so if you do want to create your own sort of controller nodes you can see how it's done if you go into the resources scripts actions and then we have the uh, create motion blur controller and if we uh, take a look at the python script here you can go through and see how it has created up the uh, the little controls for you like i said before check out the help file and there's a, a nice uh, chapter all on expressions and if you want to get even deeper go to the help and go to the customization guide and you can take a look at the silhouette scripting guide here which goes through even more examples for you and of course if you want to just stay paddling around in the uh, in the shallower waters of expressions uh, like i do then you know don't feel the need to to swim out further than you feel comfortable with uh, i hope you've enjoyed seeing how we can start to use expressions in silhouette and maybe even it's uh, given you some ideas about how you can take things a little bit further than parameter linking if you want to be part of the bigger Silhouette community, then I do invite you to come over to the forums at the Boris FX website, or join us on our Discord server. And of course, you'll find links for both of those in the description of this video. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris FX. I'll see you in another Silhouette tutorial very soon.